Welcome back everyone and in this lecture we are going to talk about the Jinja 2 syntax and now at this point in the course we are finally ready to dive deeper into the template component of Django and Jinja 2 is a full featured template engine for Python and it's what Django also uses so the T component of MBT architecture of Django is actually handled by Jinja 2 and before moving into any deeper into it I want to discuss some its basic syntax and we have already used some of its features like template extending, block content placing, setting URL navigation and loading static files and assessing the values that were sent by the context dictionary and it does a lot more beside than this and we'll be exploring some of them in the course and I want to show you the basic configuration for Jinja 2 and I'm pretty sure you are familiar with this curly braces and percentage sign so they are used for writing Jinja 2 statements so things like looping, conditional, loading static files and setting up URL routing generally falls on statements and these double curly braces are used for printing out the output in the template for example, when you pass data from view to template, we use these double curly braces to assess those values. And this double curly braces and the as sign between them is used for comment. And if you are familiar with any programming languages, comments are usually guiding language for developers. It helps us to write readable code. And the Jinja 2 templating engine will not read this comment in the template output. And throughout the course, we'll be using two main Jinja 2 feature that is conditionals and looping. So I want to discuss them here. So the first thing is conditional rendering. If you are familiar with any of the programming language, you know what it does. Basically, we have an expression and we check that expression using if conditional and do something. Basically, we will have an expression and we check that using if statement and if that condition is met, then we will run the certain code. But if it is not met, then you will run the code inside the else block. Or you could go extra ahead by implementing a leaf which checks another expression if the above expression is not met. So in Jinja 2 whenever we use the if conditional then we need to close it using the int if. And we'll be using this conditional rendering to check if the context is actually passing the data and do the looping stuff below. And we'll also be using it to check whether the contact object is male or female to apply the appropriate styles for it. In Jinja, we can look through the list of items using for loop. So for loop starts with the for and individual item in the item list. And it should be ended with in for also. And for every item in the items, we'll run some code inside it. So that was the main feature of Jinja 2 that I wanted to discuss with you. And in the coming lecture, we'll be using a lot of them in the template layer. So for now, if you are still not getting any of it, don't worry, we'll be implementing it and see it live. So thank you for watching, let's see you in the next lecture.